Shalom. <clears throat> I'm going to start by giving other praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahu Shai, Ba'ashim Arachak Wadash. Double to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the four elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now pay attention to the things that the Lord is bringing upon the earth. And the things that are being done, you know, those who are still in the deep sleep, you know, those that are still sleeping at night, they won't understand these things. Um, the Lord sent in a lot of indications. And that's why it's our job to, um, you know, stay alert. Um, let's go back to 2019 where you had a, uh, a infestation, you know, you had a swarm that, uh, plagued Egypt, right? Cause we're in modern Egypt, all right? Babylon, America, that's the modern day Egypt. You had a swarm of locusts that came on, uh, Las Vegas, you know, it uh, swarmed the city. It was all, you know, all over the news. You know, people was, uh, you know, taking footage of it. And it looked like something very apocalyptic. You know, we haven't seen nothing like that. You know, even though it's, it is normal for locusts to, you know, gather in, in swarms and go certain places. But we haven't seen that here in Vegas. And, you know, I don't know since when. But, uh. You know, that was a a wonder, all right, in 2019 that, you know, just kind of went under the radar after that, and uh, people don't really talk about it anymore. Fast forward to uh, last summer, where you had a bunch of uh, grasshoppers and Mormon crickets. By the millions, they came and they swarmed the state of Nevada. And I think they hit, uh, I think, uh, Utah or uh, you know, one of those other states. And uh, that came and went. Now it was being reported that we're going to see uh, a, a, a swarm of uh, cicadas that's going to come, that's going to emerge from underground and they're going to basically come out. And it's going to be basically like another plague and like I said, those who are still sleeping at night, they won't understand what all this mean. And uh, the Heavenly Father, he's, he's making it crystal clear of his visitation. And uh, these people, they're not going to be mindful of the signs or the scourges that he's sending. So that's why it's just our job to just you know, put the alert out there, you know, stand upon our watch, you know, at the watchtower and, you know, speak and, and prophesy. That's all we can really do. While we herald and we're ushering in the, the second coming of uh, Yahweh Shai. So um, without further ado, I'm going to just play this little clip right here and then uh, we'll get a few precepts. Lord willing, this ain't going to be a long video. The spring of 2024 promises to stir the United States with an unusual melody. A curious phenomenon is set to repeat itself after more than 200 years. Starting in May, billions of cicadas are expected to emerge from the ground in a rare and synchronized episode. The last time this happened was in 1803. The unique event is being heralded as the cicada apocalypse. What does this mean? Why is this happening now? Are there any dangers or precautions that should be taken? Earth echoes penetrate the soil to explain the cycle of these fascinating nature singers. The spectacle will resonate in a captivating open-air concert, fueled by music and movement. For the first time since the 19th century, two major broods of cicadas are poised to emerge simultaneously in the United States. It is estimated that billions, even trillions of these insects will fill the country's skies for approximately six weeks. 
The event marks the onset of spring in the Northern Hemisphere, a period when these creatures surface from the ground for a grand mating ritual. These insects spend most of their lives beneath the soil. Some cicadas have a 13-year life cycle, while others spend up to 17 years buried. These two groups of cicadas are known as Brood 9 and Brood 13. In 2021, Brood X emerged from the underground after 17 years, leaving the country in a frenzy. This time, the event promises to be twofold, causing a mix of fascination and confusion in up to 17 American states. What makes 2024 so special is the convergence of these two different cycle broods. The dual emergence of cicadas is a phenomenon that aligns only once every 221 years. The last time an episode of this magnitude occurred, Thomas Jefferson was still the president of the United States. Now that's heavy. And that's, you know, definitely uh, very significant. You know, the Lord is uh, communicating and uh, the, the world is uh, still blinded in their wickedness. All right. Now, let me get this in um, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Second Ezra 9 and 1, it says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that is very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And this is part of the Lord's visitation. You know, he's showing his, his, his presence and the signs that he's uh, showing. You know, these uh, wonders, these phenomenons. So not only do you have these back-to-back -back signs in the heavens with these uh, eclipses, but even with these plagues. You know, I mentioned a few of them before. You had the uh, the locusts back in 2019. Last summer, you had the uh, the, the grasshoppers and the um, Mormon crickets. I think there was even plagues in Florida. We were seeing all type of strange stuff happening over there. Now they're saying that it's about to be a, a another emerge of a strange phenomenon that that's you know very rare. You know, and, and this is giving me flashbacks to ancient Egypt. All right. When the Lord, you know, he sent those plagues to ancient Egypt. All right. And th the Lord was plaguing Egypt while Israel was awaiting their deliverance. We're seeing the same thing play out again. All right. So this is this is pretty heavy, man. All right. And the Lord is definitely um visiting the world if you're paying attention. It says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. And I forget, uh, there was an article that came out uh, days ago where they said hundreds of earthquakes happened on a particular coast. I'm not sure exactly where, but they've been happening all over the place. And not only that, but we're definitely seeing the uproars of the people. Look at Haiti. All right. It's, it's up in Haiti. It's up in parts of uh, Europe. And we're going to start seeing uproars here in Babylon, here in Egypt. You're going to see Egyptian versus Egyptian. All right. Because of this crisis going on, they're not doing anything about the financial situation because this place is circling a drain. All right. The, the economy is, uh, you know, you're, you're trillions in debt. And uh, the inflation is uh, continuously increasing. And then you have a migration crisis that they're deliberately welcoming. So it's not going to pan out well. We already know this. And it's going to cause uproar and then eventually chaos. So the Lord is plaguing Babylon <laughs> on all levels. We're watching the, 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 this place just fold on on itself and, and it's collapsing it says thou shalt then thou shalt well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end and the end is manifest even so times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and in endings and effects and signs. 
All right, so that's how we're measuring the times, man. We're looking at the, the, the signs and wonders that he's showing in the earth. You got the solar eclipse that they keep talking about that they're preparing for. That can be, you know, it can end in, you know, something tragic, uh, tragic happening, something catastrophic. You know, we don't know. All right. And that's how and, and the solar eclipse happening on a new moon. You know, it could be darkness, just like in ancient Egypt. If something happens and the power goes out, the grid gets affected. Or they carry out something that causes that to happen. Either way, you're going to have some darkness. That was a plague in Egypt. And what did the prophecy say? Let's go to the 15th chapter now. Second Ezra 15 and verse uh, 10. And really, I mean, I can start up because ultimately the Lord is, he's showing these uh, wonders because the people in the earth, you know, they, they still don't acknowledge the, the, the majesty of, of the Heavenly Father. They still don't have any fear. So to humble these people a bit, the Lord got to show some effects and signs, man. And the Lord is, uh, he's going to, he's going to do so. It's uh, 2nd Ezra 15 and verse, uh, I'll start at one. It says, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper for their faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. All right. Anybody that's uh, that that still don't believe in 2024, even after the prophet's been out there uh, consistently and di diligently uh, warning you, breaking these things down or making it plain to you. And, you know, all you did was just, uh, you know, resist. Um, you know, you contradicted, you, you, you bucked up against. It's all right. Let these people think what they think. And they're going to, because they're going to want answers later. They're going to want people to, you know, have answers to the questions they're going to have when the Lord starts to really turn up. All right. So it says, fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity, meaning the unbelief of them, trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. We know that two thirds of Jake, you know, they were just, you know, made to be destroyed. So they're not going to believe until the last minute when it's too late. It says, behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, you know, in different forms, you got war. Um, you know, Esau, he's the sword of the most high. All right, he got his AI. You know, he, he got his uh, military. Martial law troops are going to eventually show up on the swords and you, know, you already got the National Guards. It's going to be even more when, when it gets chaotic in these streets. It says famine, shortage of uh, food, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You know, all this uh, adultery, uh, idolatry, uh, uh, these satanic rituals and sacrifices, you know, all this uh, genocide, murder. You know, no one is uh, trust uh, trustworthy. The love of many waxing cold. You know. There's no uh, real true morale anymore. So these people are blacking out in these last days. Rebe you know, in total rebellion, but wickedness is, is, has been exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And because now these things have been done and it's been, uh, you know, built up. Now the Lord is, uh, now he's, he, he's showing up. Now he's addressing all this wickedness in the form of these judgments, these plagues, these scourges. It says, thus, therefore, uh, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and blood, righteous blood, cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. 
That would be the Lord's prophets that sign and crying for all these uh detestable things that you know we're witnessing here. All right, and the men that that uh, go up before the Father, you know, when they give up the ghosts, complaining and and calling on the crying to the Lord to destroy this this place. It says, and therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. You know, and, and that's because they're following these uh wolves in sheep's clothing. You know, they're not being made aware. They're not being warned and not being prepared, made ready for that great day. All right. So, you know, they're being led by a lot of uh, compromised false leaders, false prophets, you know, men who are out for their own uh, ulterior motives. So that's why a lot of our people are going to be destroyed if they don't find the right uh, teachers, the right men. In which if you have the elect, the Lord is going to lead you to those men. As I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. And we're in uh, Egypt now. We're in uh, spiritual Egypt. According to uh, Revelation 11 and 8. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. And smite Egypt with plagues as before. And that's why, you know, you could be reminiscent. You know, thinking back to what the Lord did to ancient Egypt. All right. And, and these current phenomena that the Lord is bringing upon America should be a reminder of that. And this is that prophecy, you know, f fulfilling itself. And you got a lot of Christians that still deny the Apocrypha, you know, th th these uh, books that are in these uh, hidden books that the devil uh, took out of uh, the Bible. But uh, how is it that these prophecies contained in this book are credible? How is it that we can go to them and pull them out and witness these uh, occurrences? You know, the Lord set the criteria for what's considered uh, true prophecy. Was that Deut Let's go to Deuteronomy, was it 18? Deuteronomy 18. And verse uh, 19, I'll start at verse uh, 19. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I'll require it of him. And ultimately speaking of our Lord uh, Yahweh Shai. But that applies to the prophets as well. It says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord have not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord have not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So that's how we gauge if... The, the the those books containing apocrypha all right if, if if there's no validity to it then why is it that these things were, were that were written why is it now being fulfilled why is the thing coming to pass this is prophet ezra we know he was a, a prophet of the lord you got ezra in the in in, in the bible and then you got ezras and the apocrypha is the same prophet all right. So that's how we know that, you know, uh, these words are faithful and true. So if you still disregarding the apocrypha at this point, then you're still lost. If, if, if the gospel um, be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You know, because the God of this world have, uh, uh, you know, blinded, blinded them. So uh, uh, reading the verse again, it says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And I will destroy all the land thereof. You know, so the Lord is, uh, he's bringing them plagues again upon the modern Egypt. And eventually he is going to destroy all of the land of Babylon. And you're seeing, you, you're witnessing the collapse as we speak. 
All right, all these natural disasters, uh, you know, the, the foreign business going out of out of out of suit. You know, now they're messing with your uh, your, your ports because it, you know these little situations, which, which I believe is uh orchestrated. Now they're messing with the commerce, just like when they were shutting down the ports. And you had all those uh, ships stuck on in, in, in the Pacific when they was, uh, you know, messing with the supply chain. They're going to set this up and it's going to orchestrate a famine. So, yeah, man, uh, uh, Babylon is definitely falling. All right. It says Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the most sized shall bring upon it so we we want to see some stuff it is all leading to the downfall of this uh this this wicked kingdom and that's what the prophets is supposed to be prophesying jeremiah 28 and 8 the prophets that have been before me and before the of old both prophesied against many countries and great great kingdoms of war of evil and of pestilence so hey here we are man all right, and uh, let me get this in uh, Sirach 36. Sirach 36 in verse, uh, I'll start at one. It says, have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us. And this is a prayer. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. Right. Let, 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 you know, show them that, you know, you're you're the most high God, that these nations, they're just men. You know, they're they're puffed up because they got all this technology, knowledge increased. So now they're beside themselves, especially this devil. As thou was sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us and let them know thee as we have known thee. That there is no God but only thou, O Yahweh. Shoe new signs. All right. If the, these rare uh, occurrences in the, in the heavens, you know, with these uh, eclipses back to back like that, how they're aligning in the sky. And then, you know, these uh, plagues, the cicada plague that's supposed to, we're going to see. They're supposed to swarm, swarm the skies. I'm pretty sure it's going to look pretty apocalyptic, man. People are going to freak out and they're going to, you know, people going to want to. That's when Jake, when they see stuff like that, then they want to, you know, go get into the scriptures. They want to go and uh, blow the dust off the Bible that their grandma got on the, on the uh, shelf somewhere and try to get into it. Now, you got to you got to show some stuff that will bug Jake out to, to, to make Jake. Get serious. It says, shoot new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand in thy right arm that they may set forth thy wondrous works. All right, and the Lord, you know, he has his way in, in, in the earth. He can show his wondrous works. All right. And the Lord can send a, a, a pestilence anywhere. And even the Lord, he mentioned that you're going to not only just have uh, famine and earthquakes and nation rising against nation, but also pestilence. Is that Matthew 24 and 7? It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And, uh, those cicadas, just like those Mormon crickets, those are all pestilences. Strong's G, 3061. Loimas. Loimas. And it says a pestilent, pest plague. I right, like the, you know, you had the, uh, the, the lice, you had the flies. You had the locusts. Those were all plagues of, of Egypt. That was pestilence. And over here, you know, we got 
you know, we've we seen some stuff already and we're getting ready to see some more. Hell, you even had the Lord raise up some uh, some killer hornets a few years back, if I'm not mistaken. And that reminded me of uh, when uh, the Lord sent those uh, hornets when we went into uh, Atlanta, Canaan. The Lord could put spirit on, on insects to do damage, to, to bring judgments. I think it's in uh, Deuteronomy 7. When we was going to go in and fight those uh, Canaanites, the Lord's going to send some uh, hornets out. Yeah, uh, Deuteronomy 7. And uh, 18, it says, Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shall well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. And uh, Esau, he's the modern day Pharaoh as we speak. All right, so don't be afraid of this damn devil, man. He, he, he's, he's, he's just a rerun of, of, <laughs> you know, th those, those Egyptians, Pharaoh and the Egyptians, man, which at that time was, uh, Mizraim, the Hamites. Now it's E. It says the great temptations, which thine eyes saw in the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord, thy God brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. All right, so the Lord, he, he, he sent hornet, uh, hornets. Okay, and you know it was a swarm of them. And them things... You know they hurt. You just know that those things hurt. Cause I've been stung by bees. Those sting like hell. And wasp and, and harness are even uh, worse than bees. Exodus 23, 28. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall draw, drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. So even the Lord has control over these uh, insects. It can bring plagues and pestilence just in that form alone, showing you how great his power is, how marvelous his works is, and that's why he is to be feared. Okay? He is to be feared above all gods. Was that Psalms 96? Psalms 96 and 3 says, Declare his, his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For well, the Lord is great. And greatly to be praised, he is to be feared above all gods. And that's, that's facts, man. Because it's the Lord that's, that's, that's bringing these things on the earth. And if you, ain't if you ain't afraid now, then you will eventually. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So, uh, you know, this is just my response to this. And Lord willing, we get to see that, you know, these uh, cicadas, you know, filling the skies. And we already got to uh, await this situation with the eclipse. So, hey, it's, it's looking real interesting for 2024. This very well could be the year of Jacob's trouble. And the Lord is just communicating with, with you know, his people, the old, especially those who are awoken. All right. Now is the high time to awake out of sleep for our salvation is nigher than what we believe. So anyway, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. And until the next lesson, Shalom.